This episode is sponsored by Fire Away Pizza, the fastest growing pizza company in the UK with over 150 stores. With their fresh quality ingredients and unique pizzas, they will have you coming back for more. Use code JAMES20 for 20% off. That's JAMES20 for 20% off. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. And then we're on. <laughs> Fucking hell. Part 172, mate. <laughs> Danny Simpson, you keep me in a job, mate. I've done more podcasts with no one else but you, mate. I think this is four or five. You keep me in a job, mate. You make me more. You pay for just, I'm going to get my kids to get, give you a message to say thank you. <laughs> Uncle Danny, mate. Because you bring me more views, more hassle, but you also make me money, mate, with these podcasts. Best thing, <laughs> It's good to see you. You're just out of it's prison. Great. Yep. Again, again. See you again next year. We'll go on number part two thousand and seven, <laughs> mate. Is uh, but as it's good to see you. You know, I've got nothing but love for you. Yeah. Um, it's good to see you out. Yeah. You're looking calm today, mm. which is a first as well. So maybe that. Oh, little, normally I'm a bit. Yeah, you're a bit on edge. Maybe that stint in prison's helped you. <laughs> Calm me down a yeah. bit. Yeah, but how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm all good, mate. Tell the truth. Literally, just glad to be home to my kids and just live my life again. Do you know what I mean? Where they tried to burp me off, it's like. Fucking hell. When I was talking 17s and that, it's like, now I'm at, it's like, whoa, calm down a bit, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think you bring a lot of it on yourself? Oh, 100%. <laughs> Will you ever change? <laughs> no, <I> never change. <laughs> a le- a leopard can never change its spots, you know what I mean? They could just change the direction they're going. How was life before that? Uh, what, before I you got nicked? the jail, yeah. But even uh, then, mate, you were I felt like I was with... losing it. I, yeah. Think, yeah, I felt like I was going, I was losing it a bit, to tell the truth. Like, nah, I'm just bunched around you. Yeah, like I was doing silly things like guns going down the wrong direction and then yeah armed police it was just all going wrong you know when you're declining as a person you're doing silly shit and i knew what am i doing what brings that on do you think i don't know adhd probably (laughs) you're definitely on the spectrum (laughs) (laughs) have you have you been tested because of me (laughs) have you been tested no never oh you need to go mate (laughs) i don't agree with the pharmaceutical industry (laughs) or labels or what but I don't know if it would... I don't think there's enough labels. <laughs> <laughs> but have you never been tested? Never no, psych- never. Psychiatric reports? I always believe. I, I have a, a weird way of believing that whenever you go to doctors and that, even if you're perfect, they're going to say you've got something wrong with you. Yeah. So why go there? And the same thing with like cancer and stuff. If you don't, if you don't know you've got it, but then you go there, next thing you know, you're dead. So why, why go there in the first place? So I don't ever do doctors and that. If the doctors tell you you've got cancer, your immune system drops by 80% instantly. I, I know, it's mad, isn't it? 80% instantly. I know, it's crazy. Like, I know someone who went into hospital on a Sunday and was dead by Monday. Uh, dead on Wednesday. It's like, hold on a minute, that was fine on Friday and Saturday. It's crazy. So, partying then? Losing yourself? Mm, literally. What age are you now, Danny? 33. Not young anymore, bro. Oh, no. Getting old, I see your videos, mate. I just shake my head. And I'll message you, you okay, bro? I'll always, I'll always check in, mate, because like I said... Do you know the maddest thing you say that, yeah? You always miss me when I'm not okay. <laughs> and it's like you're my guardian angel or something. Because you're like, the message will come through. I wake up one morning and be like, James, Danny, you are right? How you been? I'll be like, fuck it, no. Like, someone must have tapped me on the shoulder and went, message him. It's just your videos. Oh, because man. I know how... Listen, <clears throat> for what I do, I like to think myself as a professional. Mm. And people maybe question why I have you on all the time, why I speak to you, but especially with the shit that you're doing always at the forefront. But you have got a good side, and that's what I see. I know how much you love your missus, your kids, mm. and everything that you do is for them. Yeah, of people might not agree with it because it is madness, mm. but like I say, I've got nothing but love for you. Mm. People might question why. I've got many people who've been on the podcast that I'm not friends with, and I seem to be connected with you more. Mm. But it's just because, like I say, I genuinely do care. I, I genuinely see a goodness in you. You're not this... Social media can portray a fake life and people buy into that life as well. And I don't know if people buy into that, the big cars, bags of money, all the watches, mm. and maybe people message all the time and it kind of enhances your ego, yeah, where it makes you keep wanting to do it because you're getting so much attention. 
Do you feel that? Um, yeah, like I, I just, I just, I just think it's funny taking the piss out of things. Do you know what I mean? And I just think, I oh, fuck them. Like haters are gonna hate. People are always gonna talk. No matter what you do in life, they're always gonna say something. Do you know what I mean? So, I just love to wind people up. Tell the truth. Mm -hmm. I just think it's absolutely hilarious. Because if I'm honest, the jail was always pending for you, wasn't it? Yeah. The last few months. Because yeah. even me, I've had it was like, fuck, fuck me, man. Like, you, from was... from July to October, I was like, yeah, I was losing myself. But but these balloons, you're always... No, yeah, I'm never doing them again. Sucking. Yeah. No, no more. No more. I went out last night, I didn't even do one. So, yeah, I'm not... No more balloons. Too why, old for that. Why do people do them? I don't know, honestly. I, I, all my life, I've never done a drug. I've never drunk. And then, all of a sudden, these balloon things come around. I jumped on it. And I was addicted. Like, pff, I wouldn't go out unless I had two crates to go out with. And I was like, what the fuck? And I used to look at crackheads and druggies and that. And I think, how can you not stop? Why, why can't you stop? And then I got in the phase with balloons where I couldn't stop. But now I just, no, nah, I'm not. But I just feel like it just gives you that little, ooh, do you know what I mean? Buzz. But then even after a couple of hours, it don't even affect you. How much is it for a like crate? 130 pound, 140 pound. How long does that last? Couple of hours, like not, yeah, the size of balloons are too, not not long. And it gets you an extra buzz. I've never done them. I've never it done literally them. makes you feel like you're tipsy. Like if you was in a in a bar or something and you had a few drinks, it makes you give you that wall. Do you know what I mean? If you had a couple of beers or something, that's that's the feeling it gives you. What happened in London when all the armed response came round you? Oh, that was crazy, wasn't it? Um, so literally, I was in Mayfair Bar, left Mayfair Bar. Obviously, we're 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 drunk. We've gone to another club. All of a sudden, my mate Ambush rung me, said, Dan, you forgot me. I'm in the toilet at Mayfair Bar. I was like, oh, shit. Rung my mates behind in the car behind. I said, we forgot Ambush. We need to go back and get him. Turned around as we've gone back to the club, uh, Mayfair Bar. All of a sudden, the armed police poof, 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 on us. I'm like, what the fuck? As I got out of my car, one of the police officers put his machine gun through the window. I'm like, mate, you're taking the piss. Another one's pushed me over. I'm like, no, 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 they're having it. <laughs> All of a sudden, I've yeah, I just started fighting one of the police officers. Um, yeah, woke up next morning thinking, what a cunt. <laughs> that was their prime example to shoot me and get away with it. Like, they would have, do you know what I mean? Why do you think they never? Too many uh, people? I don't know. I, honestly, I, I would have I would have shot myself. Like, I don't know. I, honestly, I'm, I'm, I punched the police officer in the face. I'm wrestling with them all. They've all got guns. What happens if I get that gun? He would have been perfectly in his right to shoot me, do you know what I mean? Do you think you would have shot him if you got the gun? No. I don't know. I had too many daiquiris that night. <laughs> what, did you get charged with anything? No. So basically, what it was, when they smashed my window and everything, I was going mad. And then everyone then started pouring out the clubs and the pubs. All started videoing it. And they was like, um, what, what's this over? What's it over? Then the police got on the phone, like, look, they've got nothing on them. Like, what, what the fuck you made us do this stop for? Basically, someone in Mayfair uh, bar reported that I had a gun on me and I was in my Range Rover, but I wasn't. I was in a G-Wagon in front. So obviously, just someone reporting that I had a gun from Mayfair bar. And you had armed response? Yeah, and I had armed response. Could have died. <laughs> again, I think you're getting more hassle. But why are you so anti authority? Or you genuinely do hate the coppers, it don't you? It's, still, it's not even that. If they pulled us over... One car and and do the stop at uh like normally. There's not an issue. I'll get out, no problem. There's a license. There's this silla. It's the way they pull over. You pull over on, on aggression with someone who's aggressive. They're gonna react to that aggressively. If you come calm, it's gonna be calm. Do you know what I mean? It's like alpha male thing. But do you agree? You always antagonise because I don't know if you are banned, but you're always videoing as if you were driving. Obviously, you can't prove that, but mm. it looks as if you are driving, mm. and obviously they'll be watching. Your podcast, they'll be watching what you do on social media. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're not hiding it. It's not as if you're discreet and go off grid where they don't know nothing. Yeah, so when you're basically pretending to drive or driving, you're thinking, I'm going to get this cunt. Especially <laughs> when you're driving fucking. Do you know the maddest thing we say about all that and me losing the plot between July and October? I actually had a license then. I got my license. So all that stuff I was doing then when I was losing the plot, I actually had a license. So I don't know why I was losing the plot because my whole life I've never had a license. Now I've got the license, now I'm losing the plot. Yeah, it was just mad. But do you think that scares you when your life goes good? Do you think you need to do something to then create chaos? 100%. Why, what is that then? Uh, I don't know. I just need, I don't, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I, do, I just can't, I don't think I can handle being normal. 
mentally I don't think I can just function normally like it just doesn't work it might work for an hour like but it's just don't because even... all that driving hiding from the police pretending to drive driving driving fast fucking 160 mile an hour recording it to then getting your license you don't need to do that no, no. but it looked as if you were still driving while you were banned <laughs> <laughs> well, just it is deluded thinking. One hundred percent. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, uh, it's like you enjoy you enjoy the mayhem and the chaos with the cat and mouse game with the coppers. Yeah, one hundred percent. I love one that place. They've terrorised me my whole life. They put me in prison my whole life. So this is my way now, getting them back. E e even now, for example, they arrested me in October the thirteenth for money laundering. They took. Uh, 150 grand at my house and 300 grand in, uh, 300 grand in watches bailed me till January nicked my bird for money laundering as well but still ain't give nothing back there's no charge there's no nothing still ain't give no money back no watches back nothing they messaged every single person basically on my Instagram about money have you paid Miss Simpson have you done this have you done that what bank what's this what's that I've had bank accounts shut down because of this investigation I've had Betting, like I love a little bet on the football. They've shut my betting accounts down, all because of this investigation with the police over money laundering. Like it's boring, do you know what I mean? But not one charge. They still ain't getting my property back. So why shouldn't I terrorise them? Do you know what I mean? But they always win. They do to a certain extent, do you know what I mean? Because that police officer now that's trying to get this charge of money laundering, he's got fuck all. Now, I'm probably in his head every single night thinking, he's probably thinking about me every single night. I'm not thinking about him. I'm not harassing him for my money back. I'm not harassing him for my watches back. Do you crack on, mate? Do you know what I mean? But he's shagging his missus thinking about me. So. <laughs> <laughs> but like you say, it's the cat, and, or like I say, it's the cat and mouse game and it's the stresses then it brings on your missus, your kids, the dad not being there. Yeah, of course. Instead of stepping back that and as much as you've got pride and you want to fuck them over because you feel as if your whole life you've been in prison because... Rightly so as well, because mm. you were a menace. You were a pain in the ass. Do you know what I'm saying? So they're only doing their job from their end. Yeah. But if you were to change and go a full 180 and go the other direction, they would leave you alone. But you know the maddest thing is, though? They always put me in jail for, for shit. If they just waited and then got me properly, th then they would have me. But it's like anything. If I Just say, for example, I'm, gonna, I'm just about to walk down this road and do an arm robbery, yeah? but I'll throw this bottle of water in the road. They will jump on me for throwing that bottle of water in the road, not wait for me to go and do the arm robbery and then do everything in their power to get me to go to prison for throwing the, ball, the water in the road, but not wait for me to do the robbery where you got me banged to rights. Do you know what I mean? Have they ever questioned you with the videos and the podcast about oh said, talking about the God. watches? and This time I got nicked when I went to prison this time. I must have had a three, four, five interviews by so many different forces about this video that video driving 160 mile an hour mate honestly it was a joke like i was getting dragged out myself oh another force is here to interview you i'm like where's my solicitor oh your solicitor's on the way well i'm not going anywhere to my solicitor's here oh kent police are here to interview for this london police are here to interview for this it's like mate bore off do you know what i mean talking about videos like i've got a driving license what's up you want to take my driving license take it and go have an interview. Fuck off. How can they prove it was you that was driving though? They can't. That's why I've not been charged and not been done for it. How did they bring up a lot of videos? Did they show you the videos? Yeah, they was literally showing me an interview. It's like, mate, boring. How many videos? Well, we only got partially through the interview because I got um I got tracked out and charged for the GBH section eighteen. So the police officer was fuming. Because they I was in Met Metropolitan Police. Kent police comes to interview me. Halfway through the interview, uh, Met dragged me out of the interview to charge me for the GBH. And then Kent was like, but we're interviewing him. So Met was like, well, it doesn't really matter. This is your GBH section 18. You're here for dangerous driving. This outweighs you. Like, Simpson, do you want to go back in the interview? I was like, no, nah, fuck him. <laughs> I'm going jail anyway. <laughs> see, when you get in for an interview, though, do you not think there's a good chance I might never get out because of all the videos and all the shit you've said and all the shit you've done? No, because the videos, they've got to prove it. It's just... It's so hard to prove it and it prove it's me and prove what it is. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So many ways of changing things and doing different things, like so they can't. Do you know what I mean? 
Just inconvenience, and it's wasting yeah. court's time as well. So like, I can make my car look like it's just doing 300 mile an hour. Are they going to come and arrest me and charge me for my car doing 300 mile an hour? No, because I'll get my barrister, who's unbelievable, to stand up in court and go, it's impossible for that car to go 300 mile an hour. Then what they're going to do? They're going to look silly. You must be paying your barrister a fortune. He must love you. Same as me, mate. I love you, Danny's in the jail. I, I rub my hands now. And I think, bro, we're going to get another podcast. No, my, my, <laughs> your barrister must be doing the oh, same. He must be praying for you to get the fucking jail. It's probably him at sending the videos to the coppers. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> my barrister, she's really sick. But my, oh, is that a woman? Yeah, my solicitor, she's fucking... She, oh, she gives me an headache. But she's she's been really good. She's been in my life since I was 15. So she probably hates me as much as I hate her. What did he charge? About 500 quid an hour? <laughs> We had a standoff before, yeah, so I had to go to court. And all I had to do is give a letter to show, out, like, my mistress was insured. We had a standoff in the holding room because she wanted £1,500 to go into the court to show this letter. I'm like, I'm not giving you £1,500 to go in and show that letter. She went, well, I'm not going in. Sat there. I had to transfer her £1,500 on the spot for her to walk in the court. I'm not joking. We walked in the court. She went, there's the letter from the insurance. Pass it to the judge. Judge passed it to the um, prosecution. Case dismissed, walked out, fifteen hundred pound. Yeah, the main I was like, options. mate, you've known me since I was fifteen, you just shagged my ass. <laughs> <laughs> what about so when you got your license back, how long were you actually banned for? Because be all, ban as long as I've known you, yeah, I've known you what, yeah, five years? Whole now, life. And you've always been banned. Yeah, my whole life. Even though I see you driving about all the yeah. time. I'm gonna start sending videos in, mate. <laughs> Every day, yeah. <laughs> how long were you banned? Your whole life? My whole life. So they always used to give me two years, first of all. So every time I got close to finishing the two years ban. They'd nick me again. A police officer would say, he see me daylight driving. It'd be a bollocks. Next thing you know, court. Police officer stands up in court. Fine. Case, um, Miss Simpson driving. Another two-year ban. This one I, I bust case for last year was absolutely a joke. And this is go show you how corrupt the police officer are. Yeah? In court last year, um, Kent Police, he said, I've driven down this road in Farnham and I come past him in the Range Rover. He was coming out the road. He was turning right. He see this blue Range Rover driving towards him. He noticed it was Danny Simpson driving. All right, cool. Your evidence is great, yeah? Get the other police officer in. The other police officer come in. Um, I was driving out this road. I was turning left, and I see this Range Rover coming from my right, and this blue Range Rover. I noticed it was Danny Simpson driving. All right, cool. So where was you sitting in the car? This police officer. I, I was in the driver's seat. Oh, you was in the driver's seat? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. That's great. Get the other police officer back in. Where was you in the car? Can we just ask you where you was in the police car? He was like, oh, I was driving. My sister looks around and went, so both of you was driving the police car at the same time? <laughs> no, I was driving. Get the other one back in. No, I was driving. All right, cool. No problem. Judge, what do you want to do? Case thrown out, dismissed. That's how stupid police are. Like, that is not even a joke. Then I tried to, um, I thought, no problem. You've tried to arrest my witnesses before when I brought them to court. You've tried to do them for um, contempt of court and tried to have them arrested for lying in court. So I said, no problem. I walked straight into Northwest Kent Police Station and I showed them the evidence. I said, these two police officers have now lied in an open court with a judge. Both said they were driving the police car. I want them arrested for contempt of court. Nothing happened. Like, but if you, I'd done that or you'd done that, we'd be in prison. But that's how corrupt they are. I seen you in the big trucks. I don't know if you started up a new business. You're saying that everything's legit. I'm paying my taxes. Everything seemed good then. Mm. It seemed as you were getting up and doing the graft yourself. I was uh -huh. seeing you. I nearly killed myself what? doing that. Jesus. Yeah, but did you not fucking, uh, fucking electrocute yourself? Oh, mate, did you see it? Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I that's when that. I lost the plot, you know. I was literally, I had to go and see a shrink and everything. Like, I was mentally losing it. What like, happened? Oh, so, obviously, investing all this money into this grab wire company. Mate, we're bringing more money than I could, I could fathom. Like it was thousands before I even wake up. We're just making thousands. All of a sudden, um, I thought, oh, lovely. I'm bored of my life. Can't bother sitting indoors no more, playing PlayStation, wanking. Like, let me get out on the on the graph with the boys. Oh my god! Start started going to work. Got in one of the lorries with one of the drivers. All of a sudden, so we had to pick up the the muck from the jobs take it to our yard, we drop it off at the yard, at the weekend we take it down to Isla Shepard and get rid of it. When we took it to the yard, um, <laughs> to dr obviously I don't know what I'm doing. P point me how to rob something, I'll show you the best way how to do it. Show me how to get dirt off the back of a truck, <laughs> I ain't got a clue. So we've got the dirt on the back of the truck. So to get the dirt off, you have to put the arm up 
and then tip it and then drive forward so all the dirt comes out the back. All of a sudden, this driver has put the arm up, literally put the other thing up to tip the dirt off. As he drove forward in the truck, the, arm, the grab has only touched the electric wire going on in the sky. Oh my God, there's a big fire in the sky, but I'm thinking it's funny. <laughs> I'm just like, ah, there's a fire in the sky. All of a sudden, the driver's mad jumped out, dived out of the truck. I'm like, what are you doing, mate? He's like, run, run. I'm, I'm standing there laughing, thinking it's all fine. Next thing, bang, bang, explosion. The wheels are on fire on the truck. I don't even know where to run. So I'm standing there laughing. All of a sudden, the Eon man, the electric people come out. They're like, I'm, I'm near the truck. I've got um, merry-gold gloves on, yeah? And two sticks. I'm trying to turn the truck off. <laughs> The man's like, get away from that now. Nah. I'm like, what? This thing, every time the wind blows, uh, the wires then touch the grab again and then just all sparking off another fire again. So I'm laughing, um, trying to turn it all off. The man's like, you're going to die. It's going to blow you up. I'm like, what? So I've run away. He's run through, turned all the power off in the hole of um, New Ash Green. All of a sudden, I'm like, what's up? He was like, mate, you fucking thick. I was like, what? He said, see that water puddle there? I went, yeah. He went, if that come near you, that would grab you and explode you. Your fingers would be over there. Your head would be over there. Your feet would be... I went, are you talking to you? Come. I'll rip your head. I'm going to put you in my glove box now. <laughs> He's just like, ah, shitting himself. Um, yeah, and that was it. That was, I looked at the lorry. The whole wheel was blown out. There was fires. Then the man was talking about a fine to my mate. But then when I threatened to put him in a glove box, he then said, oh, I'm going to squash the fine. Like, he'd done us a right favour, to tell the truth. Like, but yeah, fucking mate. <laughs> Wild, that like your working days over, bro. But yeah, never. Yeah, 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 just starting, boss. How was that business, though? Yeah, it's banging. Yeah. What to, was it? A grab wire company. What was it? Just picking up stuff. Yeah, just picking up rubbish and dropping it off. So basically, you just go go along, pick up the uh, rubbish off one job, put it on the back of the truck, go and drop it off somewhere else, and then literally, if other companies need stuff like type one stuff like that, you can drop them off dirt. Type one, whatever they need. Still got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have nothing to do with it. I'll just take the wage at the end of the month. Fuck that. I ain't. <laughs> too many trainers got dirty and my life nearly got empty. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to go, though. What a way to go. He started being legit. And <laughs> yeah. That's God thing, right? You're that kid. You've had your fun. I'm taking you with me. You, People no, die with that all the time. You're not going to be legit. <laughs> <laughs> Any excuse. Oh, literally. So while you were here, you're out prison. Yeah. Um, you were expecting 17 years. Yeah. Someone attacked your car with a crowbar. Yeah. You've bounced around. Um, there were seven of them literally so, so we'll hear the full story what happened How was, just the run up to that what was life like did you feel yourself slipping uh, yeah I was slipping really I was, I was just doing silly shit dumb shit I weren't being myself just being an absolute wanker to tell the truth like literally like wasn't living normal if that makes sense like, but who is yourself do you know who you really are and what you want to be yeah just a dad like literally just pick my kids up from school drop my kids off like that that is me normal. Do you know what I mean? When I'm not doing that shit, that's when I start losing the plot. Do you think you can be easy led with the circle that you've got around you as well? Yeah, one hundred percent. Because they all seem to drink and look rowdy, and you think, mm. yeah, no, bad people. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's why I, my numbers are down now on the people I associate with, and that's it. That's how I want it. You tend that happens though when you're starting to get a bit older. Because you realise what the most important things are, like oh, one hundred percent, especially when you're in prison. Nobody, nobody's asked. Mate, I've got more. more more messages of people on social media to help my family, help my kids, help me while I was in prison than I did anybody else I've ever helped in my life. And I'm talking people I've risked my life, losing my life for them. Do you know what I mean? Like, if someone ends up in a beef, me going to do their beef. Now, not one message did I get from them while I was in prison, looking at 17 years. Nobody. Do you know what I mean? All strangers, people I've never, even, I couldn't even tell you what they looked like. Helping my family, helping me, do you know what I mean? Messaging, like, writing me letters. I was getting letters from people in Ireland, from Liverpool, from Leeds, from Birmingham. Like, Glasgow? Yeah, Glasgow. Mate, mad. Like, oh, pff, it goes to show you, do you know what I mean? Who your friends are. Yeah. And what, and your friends are like, absolutely worth nothing. But when does the realisation come that you, that life is not worth it? To when go. You're, when you're sitting. <laughs> six months expecting a leave sentence <laughs> literally <laughs> but oh. then again when you, the only concern is when you come out your confidence goes up again you start to feel freely you've kind of no I feel like I'm I'm not with it I feel like I'm just 
I don't know. My brain's just not working right now. Don't think it ever has done it. Nah, but honestly, I feel like I'm just not not with it. Like nothing's my brain's not fully functioning. Do you know what I mean? But you do seem calmer. Mm. So I can't bother. I don't want to sit in a six by six. You're just what? tired of it. Yeah, tired of it. Like and then you jail your whole fucking life. Yeah, fuck yeah. Do you know what it is? It's not jail ain't jail ain't as bad as what people think it is, but it's fucking boring. And when you're sitting there and you've seen your kids on visits, that's 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 the that's the thing. When your kids are saying bye to you at the end of a visit, that's that's the killer, do you know what I mean? But this prison I was just in proper looked after me on the visits. Like the woman on the visits, she was unbelievable. Like the way she treat my kids, the way she treat my missus. I, I, I will her for the rest of my life, do you know what I mean? Right, so what happened then when somebody hit your car with a crowbar? Oh, so basically, <laughs> I was literally, my little girl lost um, the back of her earring. So my mate Dave, I said to him, oh Dave, can I get the back of the earring? But I've been saying it to him for months and he's murder. Like you have to message him a hundred times. I love him to bits. He's my f- favourite person. All of a sudden, he's like, yeah, 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 I'll bring it back, I'll bring it back. Wasn't bringing it back. So my girl, little girl's walking around one evening, and I'm like, oh, fuck this. I'll, I've now got my license. I'll drive up there. Let me go and see him. And he loves it when I go and see him. So I thought, fuck it, let me go and see him. On the way up there, stopped in traffic lights. All of a sudden, I've looked in my mirror, and this man on a moped's like, he's off the moped, but he's trying to get through the gap. I'm like, what are you doing? So I'm under the window. I said, mate, watch the car. He's gone, ah, fuck off. I'm like, who are you talking to, you little cunt? I get out of the car and slap you. He's like, ah, fuck off, fuck off. I'm like, I'll oh, wait, mate, £2.50 an hour. Done the window up, cutting through the traffic. As I'm driving in traffic, gone through Woolwich. I've, I don't even know why I was in Woolwich. I shouldn't, it's just fucking shit off, do you know what I mean? Stopped in traffic. All of a sudden, this man's come through on the moped, just whacked my wing mirror. I thought, you cheeky cunt. From, he's gone through the traffic. I've gone in the bus lane, flat out down towards the um, lights. He's gone straight through the red light. I thought, well, I'm going to have to go through after him. Gone through the red light after him. He's then done the next left at Woolwich Town Centre. Gone left into a dead end. I thought, ah, got you now, you little shit. Pulled up outside the uh, um, alley. I literally was just going to get the little cunt. I'm thinking it's like some little kid. I'm just going to get him and make him fit swimmer. Run down the alleyway. As it bends round, I've run around the corner and there was like seven of them. All with crowbars, axes, like knife one had a knife it was like that and he's throwing it between his hands that's how big it was and I'm trying to stop but I couldn't stop it was all like gravelly floor and I'm like sliding I'm like oh shit <laughs> one of them moments you think this is my time <laughs> and then they're like you're gonna die you white cunt I'm like shit what do I do so now they're running at me they've all got me back I'm like backing up backing up backing up they're all coming towards me the one with the crowbar trying to hit me with the crowbar I'm backing up backing up like, blocking it Got round the corner, I thought, fuck me, it's your having it, you cunts. Run back to the car, got a bottle of acid, come flying back. Was like, coming in, thinking that now nah, they'll just start all running. They literally put their visors down on their crash on me and went, you're going to die. <laughs> just come at me again. Literally, this one's gone to hit me with a crowbar. I just started just squirting them all. But obviously, it was doing nothing. It was just bouncing off their crash helmets and then smothering me. I'm like, fuck's sake. Run back. As I run down the road now, one tried to stab me through my um, in my belly, but literally missed me, went through my arm. The other one's trying to hit me with a crowbar. I'm blocking it. I thought, fuck, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? They were all just on me. There's nothing I could do. Started running back towards my car. As I'm running towards my car, I thought, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to slip to the front of my bonnet. I'm going to plant my left foot and I'm going to turn around and bang this first one. It's all as I can in his crash helmet. <laughs> so I'm running towards my car. As I planted my foot, stopped and gone to hit him, turned around and hit him. He's already stopped like four foot before me. So I'm like, fuck. Now they're all there again. Trying to hit me, trying to hit me. One trying to stab me. So I'm using the one with the crowbar as a shield. So I'll keep on moving around. So the one with the knife can't get near me. And then I'm just literally blocking it and grabbing him by his helmet. And then, yeah, it was a big fight in the middle of the road. And then they then run down the alley. I jumped in a motor. And then... I was literally just going to drive down the alleyway, run every single one of them over. And I thought, no, 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 fuck, forget that. Turned around and just got out of there. My face was burning. Went and washed my face. And yeah, got out of there quickly. What were they all doing down the lane? Oh, fuck no. Was like, that all planned to lead you down there? Or I was it kind of just down there I think that's smoking where they, I think or that's like just they, chilling? I just think that's where they live. Literally. Down the lane? Yeah. What, the fucking turtles? Oh, mate. And then when I was in prison, sending me messages about... 
oh, we know who you are now. We know where you live. If you come back for us, we're going to kill you. All things like that. Leave us and we'll leave you. Um, yeah, just mad messages, sending me mad messages. And then, um, so I'm thinking, oh, sweet, they're not even going to show up at court. Like, they're gangsters, do you know what I mean? Next thing I know, turn up at court thinking the witness ain't going to turn up because they're going to kill me. Mate, the geezer's in the, in the witness room since nine o'clock this morning doing press-ups, ready to give evidence. I'm like, you little scumbag. How did you get chanced? Who, <sighs> who called the coppers? I don't have a clue. Like, I don't even know. I think some random person just called police and said disturbance and then they got all CCTV and just mounted the case together. Even though they've attempt murder literally if I show, I'll, I'll send you the pictures after if I showed you the pictures like geezer's crowbar up here geezer with a knife like that mad pictures from where did the evidence was that from shops other people's cars yeah, yeah, yeah. McDonald Shady um, Taco Bell yeah that doesn't make sense though if they get blades and that mad where's the self defence mad exactly that Exact exactly that are you missing the story you try to knock them down at the start no, nothing. No, I, I say exactly how it is. At the end of the day, I'm, my charge is now excessive self um GBH section 20, excessive self defense. Like what they were trying to charge me with was section 18 with intent. That's what they was talking 12. If I went guilty, they wouldn't give me 12. If I went not guilty, found guilty at trial, 17. And the judge even said, if you got found guilty at trial, I would not have hesitated to give you EDS sentence. I was like, what? <laughs> Like, are you fucking shitting me? What was what was I meant to do? Was any of them injured? Oh, this, oh, the injuries on this kid was so ridiculous. It's pointless. It was him even sh showing him. He had a little scabby and a little scab there and a little scab here. But the acid attack kind of things is heavy. People yeah. are getting 15 to 25s now. Well, no, a few people are. So they're Literally. better off with a gun, mate. If you fucking shot them, you'd have got a lesser sentence. Isn't it? Like, honestly. No, try to give you ideas, no, mate. Honest, no, honestly. You would have? No, no. Like, literally. Like, it is madness. Like, the sentencing they're giving out at the moment for anything is wild. How long did it take for the coppers to come to the door? <laughs> that happened on October the 26th. And then I got nicked on November the 9th or November the 7th. Did I've... you know they were coming? No. So, obviously, I went to pick up my little girl from school driving through Bexley Eve, driving through the back lanes, my mates rung me. He went, Dan, go. I went, well, what do you mean go? He went, you just drove past me in the Range Rover, didn't you? I went, yeah. He went, police just spun on you. I went, what? I've looked in my mirror. I've seen this fucking Prius with blue lights on, some bag of shit. So I thought, oh, funny. Put my foot down. Vroom. But every time I got to the end of the road, I'd let it catch up and then I'd tear off again. And I'd just then end up tearing off. Um, went to my babe mum's ass, parked on a drive. Uh, it was three o'clock I got there. My little girl comes out of school at like quarter past three. So I thought, I'll leave it a little while when I walk down to school. Went And then all of a sudden it started raining. I was like, for fuck's sake. So I just carried on sitting in the car. It got to 10 past three. Still nothing. All of a sudden got to 40 minutes past three. It's pissing down. I thought, all right, I'll get out of the car now. As I got to get out of the car, two X5s went boom. Pulled up straight in front of my drive. Get out of the car, get out of the car. Armed police. I'm like, what? I'm like, what's up? I'm thinking they don't know I've got a license now. So I'm going to do the videos and do all the funny shit. They're like, no, you're detained. I'm like, for what? They were like, we don't know. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know? Put me in handcuffs. The Metropolitan Police were being proper sweet. They was like, look, we don't know. It's Kent's matter. They've been looking for you for a couple of days. I'm thinking, I'm not even thinking the acid thing. I'm thinking driving. All of a sudden, all these um, VW Jeeps and that pulled up and then this police officer literally spat two foot tall little fucking Larry little shit pulled up rah, rah, get him in the car he needs to go now to the police station rah, rah, rah. I'm like for what then the police officer that had me the armed police they then went over and spoke to the Kent and they're like um, what's it for and then he was like oh um, GBH section 18 with intent like acid attack they've come back told me I'm like what the fuck <laughs> are you taking the piss the police officer's like, don't worry, you'll be, be in and out. It don't sound like they've got a lot of evidence. I'm like, that's sweet. Got in the van, went to the police station and... Remanded? Yeah, remanded. <laughs> what are you thinking when you got remanded? I'm thinking, oh, sweet, I ain't got nothing. Like, literally, that's all I'm thinking. Where did you get took to? Oh, Timside. HMP Timside. What was that like? Big up Timside. I loved it. Unbelievable. How are you treated in jail now with all the podcasts and people know who you are now? Like, is people... Oh, yeah, like, really good. Like, I'll have guffs come to me 
secondly, like every second. Like, oh, what's that? I watch videos. Oh, my mum follows you. Oh, when I lose my job, my little brother follows you. Like, yeah, it was mad. I even had like a governor, Andy, in there. Like, loved me. Like, anything. He'd come to me straight away. He's like, anything you need, I've got you. I'm like, like what, what are you saying? Phone. He's like, yeah, what? I'm like, like look after me. I'll look after you. He's like, all right, all right. A couple of days later, he's like, there's a phone there. I'm like, all right, sweet. When I got it. I'm like, yeah, lovely. Thanks, Ant. <laughs> Proper, like, it was, it was really good. But they treat you like, they work you like dogs in there, man. Like, literally. Like, some of the jobs is, are ridiculous. What do you do? Um, so I was an um, in, insider, and you literally work from every, every hour. Like, some days you get banged up at like four in the morning, and you're at your cell again at eight in the morning, and you've got to work from eight to whatever time the last prisoner comes in the prison. But the last prisoner can come in 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. So whatever time they decide. But, yeah, all the govs in there was, they were just nice. They're not like H&P govs, if you know what I mean. They're private sector, so. How was it being on Christmas, New Year again? Oh, horrible for my kids, man. But a man who does like, who dresses up as Santa Claus and the Grinch, he done me a right favour. He went and seen my kids and done them a nice, dressed up as the Grinch, went in the house, see all the kids and done nice things for them which was nice. But I had a mate, I was meant to be on a Christmas visit with my kids on Christmas. I had a visit the day before. I was cuddling my little girl by and one of the govs said to me, oh, um, hurry up, end your visit. I've told you in the visit. I went, mate, are you talking to my little girls? I don't speak like that. He's like, oh, whatever, little boy. I went, little boy, I'll punch your fucking head in, bro. He's like, coming in. So I'm thinking he wants to go for a fight. I'm like, sweet, let's go. Walking through visits. He's then got on the back of the podium. I'm like, Mate, if we won the fight, I'm, and I told some, another guy, tell him don't ever speak like that again because I'll slap his face. And next day I got a phone call like, we took your Christmas visit off you because you behaved yesterday. I'm like, for fuck's sake, man. So yeah, that weren't good. How's the kids? What do they think when you're in prison? Do they know? What do you tell them? They think I'm at work, but my oldest, oldest boy, he knows. But yeah, the, the girls, they think I'm at work to get loads of money to pay for their, all their toys. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, I don't want no more toys. Can you just come home? Is that the, is like you say, it's, it's not, prison's not tough, but it's the part of being away from the family. Oh. The people who you should be there protecting and not the people you're going around with at the weekends who mm. don't give a fuck about oh, you. Oh, 100%. When you're in prison. But when does the right bulb moment happen? You go, okay, do you know what? I'm really going to give life a good go. Because like I say, man, I have nothing but love for you, brother. Mm. And I always want you to win. I always mm. want you to do well. When I see you, and I think, fuck's sake. But I can also see beforehand that it's going to happen again. Mm. I can see it. And what could you do? You say somebody, look, mate, you're going to get the jail. You know what I mean? You, don't you should it, be able to say it yourself. Like, <laughs> fuck it, yeah, no, mate. But do you know what I'm saying? You don't want to, you, you go, like, it's, you don't want to preach to people and be a pain in the ass as well. Mm. Just be that friend. Listen, when the shit does hit the fan, listen, I'll be there. Like I said, I would always drop a message. Listen, if Danny needs anything, just let us know every every couple of months for every month. Yeah, of course. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think people can only do so much because everybody's old enough to then realise they're making mistakes. Mm. And it's just, People use people. Yeah, definitely. One of them. You know what I mean? And being away from the messes and the kids at Christmas, that must be the hardest thing. Yeah, it was. Because obviously I thought I was getting bowed. So obviously, because I'm thinking I've done nothing wrong. Like I've just defended myself. So on, I think it was the 12th or 18th of December, I had a court date. I've gone to court and they're just talking about me. But I've just started giving it to the judge. I'm like, are you taking a fucking piss? Do your fucking job properly. What about them? Like, this is not even making no sense. Judge is telling my solicitor, tell him be quiet, we're going to do him a contempt of court. I was like, you do nothing to the judge. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's like, remand again. But obviously I thought I was getting bowed. So I'm like, fuck this, it's a stitch up. And that same judge kicked me out of, so my mate was on trial a few months before I went away and I went to the court. And then the judge kicked me out of court anyway, saying that I weren't allowed to be in court because I was intimidating, I was staring at him. And then it was the same judge that had my bail up. So I knew I wasn't getting bowed, do you know what I mean? Because it's an acid attack. Oh, no. Because you lived it, you might, and used to that chaos, you might think, nah, nothing. Mm. But it's an acid attack. Oh, if no. you take someone's eye out or fucking scar their face, you're done buying to rise because it's the intent mm. behind that and the fact that you've left. I'm just thinking in my head, though, what if they stabbed me? That was, forget the acid, the acid just a GBH. That's murder. Do you know what I mean? Like, what was I meant to do? Run them over. Because you left and come back? Yeah. Is that, was that's, that what we're saying? That, that what you just said there is where I left and come back. 
<laughs> yeah, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, could, so I had the chance to leave. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I didn't. I decided to come back. Which but if you had the acid back. probably going towards them when they're going towards you, you probably had a good case. Yeah. Because it's self defense, but it's fucking leaving, grabbing acid, right. and then come back and squishing people like a fucking fireman. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It doesn't look good. No. And plus, because of your previous, also, they'll be thinking, man, this kid's a loose cannon. Oh, literally. W when did you start realizing that you could get 17 years? When well, I didn't get bound on that 18th of December. What was the, what was the, the lawyer saying? Um, oh, they were shitting themselves. Like, and I, do you know what? I never take advice from lawyers because I always think they've got to tell you the worst because when the best happens, they look unbelievable. But they was like, no, no, this is really serious. Like, you've got to take this serious. I like, put my number on your pin. I'm like, I'm not putting my number on your, I'm not putting your number on my pin. For you not to pick up the phone, for me to sit in prison and start smashing the phone up. I'm not doing it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I see you at court. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. <laughs> They're like, no, this is serious. I'm like, no, it's not serious. There's seven of them with weapons. Then when they sent me all the evidence, and I'm seeing seven guys with weapons, and I'm talking to them, the governors and that, and I'm like, look, you're a normal person. What, what do you think of this? Showing them pictures. They're like, ah, oh, you're sweet. Like, they've tried to attack you, and you've basically just defended yourself. I'm like, yeah, sweet, no problem then. But I went, it weren't actually sinking in, like, you've gone away, you've come back. Silly boy, do you know what I mean? And so where are these where are these kids from? Um, Woolwich, obviously. Are they British? No, 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 Portuguese and Brazilian. But my sister kept on having a go at me over that because I kept on saying, "Have they got a visa? <laughs> are they working legally?" And my sister's like, "You can't say that. That's racist." I'm like, "How the fuck's it racist?" No, that's a fair question. Exactly think. that. If he's in the country illegally, and he's don't do what? Who drives around with a crowbar on a moped? Why? Do you know what I mean? Are they Uber drivers? Yeah, Uber drivers. All of them? All of them. So you're getting your McDonald's, a cunt's got a fucking crowbar down his arm, do you know what I mean? Like, what? Can I get a Big Mac and hit over the head with a crowbar? And every one of them showed up to court? Yeah, every single one of them. Seven? Yeah. yeah. What were they saying in their statements? They, want, they wanted me to pay for the crash helmet and their clothes and stuff. In their statements, it was ridiculous, saying the white guy, he looked like he... he he was gone. He just wanted to kill somebody. And um, we was fearful for our lives. I'm like, you cheeky bastards. Like, you're the one with knives. You're the one with crowbars. You're the one with axes. But I'm the one who looks like I'm going to kill someone. What the hell? If you wouldn't have hit my wing rail, I would have carried on cruising. There'd have been no issue. Did you ever think about pleading? Uh, no, no way. I would have rid it to the wolves fell off. <laughs> literally and the deal was 12 years no that's what they were saying they were saying plead guilty we'll give you 12 plead not guilty we're going to push you 17 lifer yeah because that's when my when my solicitor was trying to do the deal of getting the charge dropped down that's what they was talking about would you have accepted a three or a four no i didn't do anything in my head i was madly <laughs> in, the, in the zone you jumped of, out with acid you <laughs> fucking mad bastard <laughs> In my head, I was just like, I ain't done anything. Remember, Charlie. your lifestyle to the average person does is not the same. Hey, they were trying to say Andrew Tate. They was literally, I've got the court paperwork. They put bringing in my Instagram. They was glad that I'm the Andrew Tate of London. Like, I'm like, they can't put my Instagram and in that in. My sister was like, I know. Because in your eyes, Andrew Tate's innocent. But in all of our eyes, he's guilty of sin. So if they mention that to the jury... Miss Simpson, I'm sorry to tell you, you're getting a guilty, bro. <laughs> Just on the, that. I'm like, what the fuck? So we're trying to fight that they shouldn't be allowed to put in my social media. Because it's just, but you're, you're, you're trying to make me look bad, do you know what I mean? Yeah, because I, some, I think in Scotland you're not allowed to talk about people's previous either. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to talk what they've been done with or what they've been charged with because it can affect the jury. Yeah, they didn't put it in for that after. Did yeah. they put it in your socials? No. They, so they didn't put in for my previous um, bad yeah, character. I don't think you can. So normally they do. Normally they put in, in England. Yeah. Must make it different. Yeah. So normally they put in bad character application. They didn't put in for it on this one, which was good. But then they tried to put in my social media account. And these kids were messaging you from Instagram. Yeah, literally fake accounts or yeah. fake accounts. Seeing people I know. Are they known? No, no. Just like just around the area. Literally. And how long did the trial run? Uh, Day one, day one, day two of trial, we sorted it out. I got um, section 20, the excess self-defense, because I was trying to do, my solicitor was trying to do a new hearing to do um, self-defense, and then the prosecution was trying to get me to go guilty to GBH section 18 without the intent. 
But we was like, no. Then the judge basically told him, like, look, I'm not going to, you'll lose if we do a new in here into the prosecution. What's that? So basically, they do a little mini trial for the judge and the judge decides if you're guilty of this or you're guilty of that. And then to that's see what what's you, going to yeah, trial. To see what you have to go to trial for. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, basically told him, like, no, you're not going to get that. And then they then back down and done a deal on Section 20. Did they come into the dock? Did they give but evidence? Who, the police? The, the... No, because obviously we'd done a deal where not to, like, I just went guilty to the Section 20. But their main thing they wanted was me to have five points on my license for going through the red light. That's all the prosecution was going on about. That was their main thing they wanted in the deal was me getting five points for going through the traffic lights. Like, I was like, what? We're yeah. talking about GBH Section 18. We're talking about 17 years. We're talking about 12 years. And they're going on about me driving through a red light. After, he said, I sit my crowbar. Where's these five points? <laughs> what the fuck? How many points do you have in your license? Yeah, I don't have it no more. We got revoked. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I don't even know. I got out of prison and I did all these letters. I'm, so I'm going through the letters and it's like, DVLA, like, send us your license back. I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, you've exceeded the um, points limit. I'm like, I ain't got no point. I've only got the five points I just got rung the court last week they're like no you got six points in 2020 no 2022 i'm like what they're like yeah for um not disclosing a driver of vehicle i'm like i've never put a car in my name so how can i disclose a driver of vehicle so how can you give me points for it so i put in a, a statutory decoration to get them points squashed mm-hmm. they get squashed in september anyway so in september i can get my license back but i put in to have them squashed because that weren't me and then get my license back. Back on the road. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> back in the jail for Christmas. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't even know. need to go Wandsworth because everyone's shags in Thames Island anyway. <laughs> what about that, bro? Yeah, they I know. got the guard getting pumped. Oh, no, that's nothing. Though. My mate's doing it now to a uh, guy Amy in, uh, when he was in Thames Island. He was smashing the life out of the governor. He used to smash on road and obviously when he got there, get all around it again, do you know what I mean? It mad. just happens. It that happens girl was the only fans in that. That'll boost her content. But every prison I've been, it happens. Do you know what I mean? Literally. It was in strange ways before. It used to happen there. Elmley used to happen there. Rochester used to happen there. Like I've put it on me in Rochester. I've the other been... female. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a female. But I, sh- I-, I proper shit myself that day. I don't think I've ever shit myself for a female. Yeah, so I'm one of my bitches, fuck. Uh, she was. <laughs> I- her nickname was Big Bird from Sesame Street. I was like, sorry, I've got a girl. <laughs> so once the deal gets in place... Was there any, just because you'd done a, a remand, you were getting out straight away or did you have to finish off time? No, so I got, um, so I went guilty to section 20, um, excessive self-defence and got 20 months to 10. Um, so I had to go to practice prison to finish off the time. Then um, all the prisons got ramo, didn't they? So then I'm trying to get this ECSL early release scheme. No, I was trying to get tag, trying to get tag, but... The, gov mom, um, the governor that my, my mate was shagging, she put a stop to it. She was like, you ain't getting tagged. I was like, what do you mean I'm not getting tagged? She was like, no, you're not getting tagged. Like, no. So I went, all right, sweet, whatever. Then the ECSL come in, this new thing, 70 days of release. So I was like, sweet, I put in for that. Um, and that's what I got, ECSL, early release, 70 days release from prison. What was it like getting out? It was different. I was like, fuck. Why? Because I thought I was getting 70 years. <laughs> Is that the longest you could have got out of everything through the years? Um, Is that the longest you've been looking at? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. That I've been nicked and charged for. Yeah. But that's 17 years you're, you're not getting out to your 40s. I'm not that. Do you know what? I, that's exactly how I was counting. I was counting my little girl's age. And then I was adding on what I would be doing in prison to their age as kids. My little girl, I would have been 15 when she got out. Yeah, even good behaviour and that, you're still probably doing 13, 14 years. Can't do, but good behaviour in these prisons. That's you, what I'm right? saying, you'd been to your 50. It's actually Charlie Bronson, oh, mate. Oh, <laughs> fuck, you know. But that's the, that's what you've got to, and I know we can have a laugh and joke and talk shit, but that's the seriousness of it. It's not about doing the time, it's about your missus not being there when you come out, your kids are yeah, there, don't know who their dad is, who else is raising your mm, kids. Prison no is, how, prison's prison for mugs. Yeah, prison do, it is for mugs and it doesn't do anything to deter you from crime at all. Like, it don't do anything. You don't do courses in there, you, don't, you just sit on your ass. It's just a waste of time. 
and that's what it is. It's, 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 a, it's a mugs game. But the whole prison establishment now has changed from what I remember. From when I remember, gang bangers, gangs, drugs, robberies. They're, they're the people that was in prison. Now it's businessmen. It's everyone's in there for encro. So I'm like, everyone you talk to, what are you in jail for? Encro. How long did you get? 15 years. Oh, what are you in jail for? Oh, got 24 encros. Like, what? This is the whole prison. Everyone's in there with tans and veneers. <laughs> like, That's right, and then literally, <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? You used to like gangbangers from Peckham, Deptford, Lewisham, just all fucking encro people. Like, it's completely changed. Like the whole atmosphere of a prison, just crackheads and encro. What do you do now that you're out? What's if you've got a plan for staying on the straight and narrow, staying out of prison, staying? I'm police away from you and a cop was chapping your door and new charges and new hassles. Like, what do you do? What is it Danny Simpson has to do to be normal? <laughs> I was going to say, can I be normal? Um, I don't even know. Just just try and be more chilled. Do you know what I mean? Do you see yourself off the scale when you, with the, when you act, the way you act? Yeah, I'd, I'd only when I look back on it. Because I remember doing a podcast for you three, four years ago and I says in 10 years time, you're going to look back and all this and think, what the fuck was I doing? Oh yeah, 100%. But when you're in it, you don't, I don't think when I'm in it, yeah. when I'm doing whatever I'm doing, I could be jumping off a roof and you go, what the fuck are you going to do? What are you doing? And I'm like, I won't be thinking of it. I'm like, all right, sweet. Yeah. Do you, I don't, like I says earlier, I don't think the intention, because you get a lot of attention mm. from social media, from fucking fans and supporters oh, like, and mad yeah. stuff like that. But uh, man, box has been flooded. Hope one of those podcasts is Danny. Hope one of those podcasts is Danny. Um, because every, like you say as well, it brings views and you're a, you're a popular name mm. in this industry as well. Everybody mm. talks about you even when I'm with outside people always ask, what's that Danny Simpson? Like? I just say, listen, he's off his fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> I just say, I say, he's off his fucking head. Because people think because of what you're doing loud and boisterous, a lot of people look at that and think, fucking idiot. Mm. But you are up for it as well. I've right. seen you. You are proper and, and you are loyal as well. Yeah. And I've said that in other podcasts. If the shit was to hit the fan, I'd ever phone you. You'd be there in a heartbeat. Oh, 100%. And it's not, That's my problem. Yeah. That I'm there for people in heartbeats. You know what I mean? That's what I need to take a step back from. Because are them people there for me in a heartbeat? Do you know what I mean? Are they? No. Nah. No way. What have you learnt most from that sentence? Um, I need to give my kids a good life. And I can't be the good life. And what I mean by good life, I don't mean money. I don't mean cars. I don't, because that's irrelevant to kids. Time, love, energy. That's what I mean by, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Give my kids a good life. Because all the other life that you do, if I'm honest, it's a selfish lifestyle. Oh, 100%. Because we think about ourselves. Yeah. And I'm speaking from me in the past. I don't give a fuck about anybody. Mm. I just wanted to get fucked up at the weekends. Mm. Never cared about the kids. Never cared about my family. Selfish. Mm. And then you start looking at it and you think, fuck me. What was I thinking? 100%. And then the only thing is when you don't become selfish, it becomes more responsibility. And that's the hard thing because you start thinking differently. And then you start thinking, does he think me a mug or this? And then it's a constant battle of the fucking good and the evil within. 100%. That is a constant battle. Mm. It is a constant battle. But you've got to just think, at the end of the day, you've got to make them kids smile, give them a good life, was make them happy. Was there much trouble in prison this time? No, I think I gave a few people a slap. That was about it. Why? Because I had this job, and then in this job, I had to do get people on a CMS, make them do their menus and stuff like that. I remember this one day, it was my second day on the job. I've been in the prison three fucking days. All of a sudden, I've gone into this room, got this little crackhead kid shouting out the window to his mates on the football pitch. I'm like, mate, shut up. You're going to fuck it up for everyone else. The guy's going to come out, bang everyone up. No, 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 no. Who are you talking to? I went, what are you talking? Slap, slap his face, sat him down. I like, Don't ever speak like that. Mates come in like, damn, what are you doing? Right? I'm like, fuck, I will not be spoken to like a cunt. Um, but in there, it's not... It's, like I said, it's not the gangbangers and that no more. So you don't end up in fights and all things like that. Do you know what I mean? It's it's just rubbish now. It's all businessmen. Do you know what I mean? But apart from that, no, didn't end up in one fight. Stuck it on a few people, but nothing major. Do you know what I mean? One day, one o'clock in the morning, one kid was screaming on the wing. But obviously we're open because obviously we've got to induct the new people that come into the prison. But I just I was in bed. I literally locked my door from the inside. And I've come out, he's telling the govs, he's smashed them up. He's telling the fucking other insiders, he's smashed them up. I've come down, I'm like, mate, what are you going to do? 
He's like, oh, watch if I lose my shit. I was like, lose your shit. Bearing in mind, my eye ain't even open. My shorts are on backwards. I'm like, lose your shit. Smash the gloves up. Smash him up now. There you are. I was like, matter of fact, get down to my cell, number 13. Come to my cell. I'm going to smash you up. I was like, how about this then? Suck your mum. He's like, my mum's dead. I was like, well, suck your dead mum. He's like, I'm like, come to my cell. He's like, it's just all stunters in there. Do you know what I mean? Not on it. Like, they don't want to tear up. It's not as if you've lost a good bit of beef. Oh, Are you training hard? No. Nah. Yeah, you know Football. You do a lot of football in there. Like at Thames you do a lot of football. How much? Every day? I always looked after with it though. Five or six or seven? Uh, it's like eight side pitch, like massive pitch. Did you ever get to play the screws? No, so we, I literally we just... We've done that in Berlin, we, it was Celtic v Rangers, but the, and then we've done the uh, Prisoners v the screws. I just missed it though, because yeah. we'd done the football competition. Every summer it was, I think, every June or July. We literally just done a um, wing competition where every wing has to play each other, <laughs> and then the winner literally gets to play the Govs, but the Govs are dog shit anyway, like we see them. They, was, they couldn't have played our wing. Like, my wing was the best wing. We had Kurt, Boateng, like... We had the best footballers. Like, I was the top goal scorer in the jail. Like, mate, it, it would have been... The Govs would have got absolutely battered. Like, they're all the Govs was fat and, yeah, no good. Why don't you do that? Join a football team or try and sign up for another fight? Because I know you've done the MMA sort of stuff, but why don't you focus on something productive and, and keeping you on... Keeping busy, you know? I'd love to. I'd, love, I'd message misfits all the time. Like, and London Street Fighters, like, because I know London Street Fighters train um, KSI and they used to train Lee. So I'm like... Get me on, get me on, but miss, they're never going to have me on there, man. It's full of love. Oh, mate, who would of, you like to fight? Any, any single one of them, any one on that absolute. They're absolute divs. Have you seen them fight? Yeah, it's like, mate, leave off. Why haven't you had a fight on it? I thought you had a fight. I was supposed to fight last year, mate. There's a young kid, uh, Anton from Love Island, called me out a couple of weeks ago. I just laughed. I actually respond. It's cringe as well. Oh, no. if, money's right, it, if the money's good, that's the only reason they're in for it. They're only in for it for like they don't. They don't want to. It's not. It's not fighting. They don't want to beef. They just want to have a boxing fight, get their money, get yeah. their picture took. That's it. It's not like how it used to be. Where I'll turn up at your gym and hot you up. Do you know what I mean? Like it's mm. it's fighting, but it's not fight. It's just for yeah. money. Do you know what I mean? That's all it is. It's more for the gram. It's just, it's, for me, I see it as business. But I'd love to do it. Misfits, if you're watching, get me on. Anyone. Yeah. Any day, any time, anyone. I'm, and James. And Listen, man, I'll get it clipped up, man. We'll tag them all in. <laughs> listen, they fucking have anybody on. I, I, they will not have But it's just on. trying to find... I think I'm too, I'm too rago for it. You would need to... Come down. You would need to, yeah, come down. I'll be slapping people you in the way. <laughs> yeah, calling people out and then have armed response around you because it is a professional business. Oh, 100%. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But people will come out of prison, change their life and do good. Mm. They would have you on. Yeah, 100%. But not when you've just, after a fucking ass. Money's got to be right though, I know my yeah, worth. Not just that. There's loads of those pr uh, productions now though anyway. Yeah, no, but you want you don't want to just go to some moody promotion and then just be a fucking... Yeah. work all around the mountain you know what I mean mm -hmm. you want to go and do it you're going to do it properly what about the Lee Murray stuff mm. what's happening with I, him I ain't got a clue literally I don't even know what's happening with my own brother at the moment let alone Lee what's happening with your brother um, he so he had trial for deportation last month two months ago now the judge is going to make a decision on the 26th if it breaches his human rights to deport him back to Albania for the murder so we're just waiting 20... what's he expecting well, the judge did ask um, to go to Albania or send someone to Albania to view the prison that he would be going to and if it would breach his human rights. And the judge turned around and said no. Um, Albania turned around and said no. They basically said, look, we send... When England asked for Albanian criminals, we send them back like chickens. When now Albanians asked him for British citizens, you don't want to send them back. So, yeah, fingers crossed. He don't go back to Albania because if he goes this, he's going to be a dead chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that, a British person landing in an Albanian jail for killing an Albanian mafia geezer. God, you ain't going to survive, are you? The Albanians are ruthless as well. Ruthless as well. Like, I got told like, there's jails out there, they've got guns and that in them. Like, he will not be alive six months down the line. Where is he now? Uh, ones with... <laughs> and, but surely the British will hold him here, no? <sighs> Fuck no, he's a British. Try to extradite him like Danny to... Simpson's brother, send him. <laughs> yeah. And they try to extradite him to Albania? Yeah, literally. But I don't even know what happens if he don't get deported. What, do they then put him back in remand and then retry him again to... So I don't even know. Because I was in Thameside with some geezer. Um, he's been on remand for five years and he, he's got a Netflix series and also he robbed like a pound of every person in India. 
this man and literally he's been on remand for five years they've been trying to deport him back to um, India because he's got a death sentence out there I know I'm mad isn't it he's with the pan of every person in, our, in India he's got a Netflix series and everything like a billion dollar or dollar something man so what happens if he'd done someone in prison and they sentenced them eight years ten years would they still get to stay here who what the Indian guy so oh, I don't know, I don't know how, you. how that works. He had more paperwork than I've ever seen in my life. Like, he had boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of paperwork. And what happens with your brother? What evidence have got? Have they got much against him? Is he fucked? Um, I don't really know, to tell the truth, but evidence-wise. Because solicitors don't talk to me. They're like, nah, we can't tell you anything. And obviously, they don't talk to my mum or, my, or his bird. And it's a murder charge? Yeah, murder charge. Is this UK or Albania? In Albania. And he's came here and they've jailed him here? Yeah. See, that's the thing with the coppers as well. It's not just your family history. It's not just your history. It's now everyone around you. Literally. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's always going to bring attention. When's he up in trial? Um, the trial's happened for the deportation. Now the judge makes the decision and comes with a verdict on the 26th of this month. What would they expect if he went to Albania? Is the sentence he's big there? He won't be alive. Like, that's not a joke. Like, he will not survive the sentence. Like, 100 million percent. Uh, he'd get killed. Eight fa of that Albanian family, the Albanian family that set up, eight of their family members have been killed since the murder. Like that family of the man that died, his family have killed eight in that family. Retaliation? Yeah, uh, retaliation. The Albanians don't fuck around, man. <laughs> they are proper. Like everybody in the UK thinks they're gangsters, but the Albanians, the Turks, the Irish, mm -hmm. don't fuck around, man. <laughs> Can it? Especially in their country. <laughs> Fucking hell. Fuck's sake, Danny. Oh, no. What does your mum say at all? I don't... I don't Do you really speak know. to your mum? Yeah, but not really. Well, the police tried to tell her, like, I'll oh, be, be be wary and all that. But here's what it is, isn't it? What's going to happen? That's going to happen. Do you regret that? Because, like I say, it's the, it's the effects it has the people around us mm. who love us with, like, prisons and... Because, like I say, you're not fucking bad. You mm. do daft shit. Yeah, of course. And you love it. And the thing about you is you know you do it. Mm. Um, but it's the pressures of the mothers, like I say, the missus getting to jail. It's everybody else. Oh, 100%. And because you can do sentences mm. standing in your head. But it's everybody else they come for. Mm. And that's the hard thing about that lifestyle. The way I, do, I, I describe it, I can't stand my dad, though. But at the end of the day, he, they, he made us. Do you know what I mean? He made us what we are. So, at the end of the day, he just has to deal with it, do you know what I mean? Do you think that's a big thing with your not having the love and respect for your dad where you've not got that guidance? Do you think that plays a part? Uh, yeah, definitely. Do you not worry about that for your own son then because of who that's you are? That's why I don't, I, I do for my kids everything that my dad never done for me. Do you know what I mean? I know, but you're in and out of prison as well. I know, that's the only, that's the only bad thing. Do you know what I mean? So mm. it's all right you saying that by getting them football boots and anything they want. It don't mean fuck all. Literally. Like you spoke earlier, it's the time. Time. Because once they get to, because I know you're, mm. it's a wee man, 14, 15 now. Yeah, 13. Um, so, and I know how much you're doting your kids and your family. That's the fucking sad thing about oh, that's it. That's mad. It's that thing, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> I'll see it, and I'll say, you okay, bro? And you go, yeah, fuck it. And I think, man, like, like I said, I don't want to preach. And you seem calmer, but mm. I just worry that the shackles come off two weeks, four weeks down the line when you start getting the buzz for it again. Do you know what I mean? I can't. People... I've got probation for 10 months. <laughs> Is that what you've got? You're sweet for 10 months. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody can uh, sleep. Literally. Are you on um, any curfews or anything? No, nothing. So you're out licence for 10 months? Yeah, 10 months, man. No holidays, man. I'm pissed. That, that used to be my getaway. Did they take your passport? No, nah, but I've done it before. I took my Mrs. Paris for Valentine's fucking come back and they nicked me did you see them videos yeah but I've seen what you were driving a fucking G-Wagon in that there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> were you out on license uh, no I weren't on license uh, yeah I wasn't no I weren't on license with a G-Wagon one we go every Valentine's to Paris mm -hmm. it was about three Paris to go yeah I went out there literally four days I come back full recall stayed in prison the whole time like literally I had the worst probation officer from uh, Bex Eve I will refuse to go to the office. They're so involved with the police. They think they're police officers. What about everything in the clear then? You've no more charges hanging over your head, no more bits? Oh, no, nothing. Nothing at all. Free as a bird. Just not get a licence? Yeah, just not got a licence. How's it been back home with the family? Yeah, it's been bang on, too, too. Uh, me and my missus were talking about it on the way here. It was like, saying about, I was talking to my sister yesterday and we were saying about, uh, how's it been? 
And I've been like, yeah, sweet. And she, because she thought I'd, I wouldn't be able to cope with the stress of the kids screaming and behaving like the way they behave. And I was like, no, nah, it's been bang on. And even my missus was like, no, nah, you, you've, you've been coping with it better than I thought you would. But I, I adore my kid. I don't want my kids. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they're my world. Like, I, I'm, I'm a bad parent in, in the sense that I let them do whatever the fuck they want. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I, think, you know, I spoke to Tommy Mallet and that as well. And he struggled when kids used to cry and yeah. stuff like that. But that's ADHD, he says. Mm-hmm. So it is. And that's what you I find out the symptoms, mm. you start understanding it more because then you can adapt to it more. Do you know what it was? I read um, a, a thing about kids and it was saying when kids are screaming and they're uncontrollably screaming, it's because they don't know what they're doing. So how can you lose your shit when they don't know what they're doing? So you need to comfort them and show them love. Do you know what I mean? Mm. To stop that. By getting the ump and losing your shit, by them screaming, it's not going to help the child. The child don't know what they're doing. So when my kid's crying out, I'm straight over, boom. Like Superman, yeah. pick them up, cuddle them, shake them. They just want to be served. They want to feel comfortable. That's, that's it. And the battles that we don't face, our kids will end up having to face because One. it's learnt behaviours. All that shit and fucking shit. No, my kids will not face no battles. I will be in there like any a shield for Do any you know battle I mean? they ever have. But then again, you've got to understand the life that you came from as well. It's not mm. been easy for my kid. Oh yeah, 100%. But again, it is learnt behaviours, the mm. model image. So all the screaming and shouting, listen, we get pissed off, ah, fuck off. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's fucking life. Look, men, lifestyles are tough. Women's are tough as well. But Women's life is, is, is probably the hardest. To yeah. Try. They can, um, I always say it, women are stronger than men. 100 million. Look at the way we act mm. is weakness. Oh, 100%. And the way women can nurture and love. Not all women. Women some don't women show are, a weakness. Yeah, some women are cunts, but <laughs> from what they go through in life, no, you've got to be honest, man, like men and women. No, because women are spiteful. Yeah. That's what it is. When women are hurting, they become spiteful. I think when a man hurts, we become better because yeah. we learn from the pain. 100%. Women go the opposite and they can fucking hurt you. The powerful, aren't they? Yeah, bastards. <laughs> 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 but yeah I, I always say it women are the strongest species on this oh, planet oh 100% the, the without revol- women the world yeah, would run the world revolves around it and if women are in charge maybe they leave, we wouldn't have words mm. we wouldn't have all the I'm codependent mate I have to have that woman there to pat me and tell me I've been a good boy do you know what I mean what about getting married or anything more kids I'm not really I'm not really one I don't really care about getting married like I, I, I never wanted to get married I never wanted to do engagement I always thought give the kids the money do you know what I mean like why would I want to go and spend 40, 50, 60 grand on a wedding give the kids the money do you know what I mean but then when my missus explained it to me she was like look I'd just love to be engaged and then when she said that then I come around to the idea of which is right do you know what I mean why shouldn't she want a ring on her finger why mm-hmm. why shouldn't she want to be like oh that's my fiance or that's m- my husband do you know what I mean which is right do you know what I mean but getting married that next step I don't I, yeah I'm not yeah, I feel like when you're with someone, that's your missus anyway. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I'm the same with marriage and signing into the government. And it's a bit of paper. And I think the men get fucked over with that as well with the law and women get the majority. And um, I would always be wary of that. And I wouldn't mm. sign a prenup because it's, I mean, maybe I would. But I feel as if there's a lack of trust. But again, 100%. I just know how women can operate. I just, like you say, the engagement, I love you. You're mine. Yeah, I'm that's yours. Like everyone knows that's your, yeah. that's your missus. And the marriage thing. thing to be spending, I know people have spent a hundred bags on a wedding. Easy. For one night. Easy. And I think like, they could get a few properties. Wedding there dresses. Like, I'm hearing 10 bags, 15 bags for a dress. You're going to wear one day. You're not even going to wear it at the party afterwards. You're going to wear it to walk down one aisle. <laughs> no, forget that. That's a deposit on an ass. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> fuck that. Where do you go then for the future? What do you do? What's the plans? Have you got any vision? Or are you just happy to be out and just taking it day by day? Yeah, right now I'm just happy to be out and just taking it day by day, trying to be calm. Um, and yeah, just trying to get my nut down, crack on really. It was therapy. It was, yeah, it was going, it was going all right. And then you end up in the jail. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you fucking mad bastard. Oh, Is it, I'm, trying to get, I'm trying to get back onto that now through probation now. But you need to do it when you want to do it, not just a case of... Oh, no, I do like doing it because yeah. you get to sit down, talk to someone, let it out. I feel like that's my problem. I don't let it out. And then when I let it out, it's violently. I think that's the majority of men, though, because we build it up. Mm. So we get tense mm. and then we get angry and then we get we don't breathe and then it's fucking everything. I oh, know. just want to kill every cunt. Oh, no, I get like that all the time. You know what I'm saying? But I think I... that's the majority of people. Mm. But you act yours out. Mm. People think about it. 
you know what I mean? I we don't get think about it. We get intrusive thoughts. Mm. Oh, we say it in podcasts. I think I could kill that cunt, bury him there if I'm out running. <sighs> and I think, but it's just intrusive. You get the thoughts. It's, I, do you, Mate, I get you back it. it up? I get a lot. Like, right. even the other day, I went looking for someone. Like, something happened. I thought, no, fuck that. I'm going to do this cunt. And angry. Instead of me just going, to calm down, chill, let out. Nope. In the car. Let's go to it. Let's go find this cunt. Do you know what I mean? But you're out with license. Oh, no. And then you're back in. Oh, no. Who, do you feel as if... I don't think like that till the next day. <laughs> oh, you're, you're dubbed up? Oh, literally. No, do you know what it was? As soon as I found him and found out where his new ass was and all that, come back down again. It's the... It's the you, you, you've gone looking for me. All right, cool, no problem. Let's... Angry, rage. Get in the car. Go here. Go there. Put trackers on this and that. Find out where he lives. Find out where his kids go to school. No problem. Crack on now, mate. Do you know what I mean? What about the people next day? Calm down. <laughs> what about the people you've robbed over the years? People say they're going to do this and do that. Has anything ever come into fruition? You know the saying, don't you? Mm. You do nothing. I mm. said it. I'll say it again. <laughs> you've got a clothing brand out as well. Yeah, the t shirt. Yeah. That was just fun and games. And that was while in prison? Uh, no, that was what, when I was out. I'm on like season two like, of t shirts. I think it's hilarious. When a geezer sends me a picture and he's on scaffolding, like, with do you do nothing on his back? Like, I'm like, Wow, like, where can I, people get your t shirts on my social media? But well, it's just been shut down. But yeah, on do you do nothing Instagram page? It's, oh, yeah, your socials get shut down today. Yeah, Who was that from? I don't even know. I literally was playing uh, Call of Duty, turned around, unlocked my phone. It was like, you've been logged out your Instagram, shut down. But this is like the hundred of Instagram I've had shut down. Remember last time I come here, I had my Instagram shut down as well. That's fucking strange. That's strange. Yeah. Maybe they know you're coming here, mate. Oh, literally. What that? Just people just on it, like reporting, reporting, reporting. Like I've lost Instagram, one hundred fifty thousand followers, eighty thousand followers, ten thousand followers. Like it's just like, as soon as it gets there, Open. shut me down. Mm-hmm. What do you learn from psychiatrists? What do you What do you think you learn the most about yourself? To deal with situations in other uh, other other ways than. Going, yeah, rapid. Do you think you ever contain that? I don't think you can contain it, but you can look at how to deal with situations in other ways. Do you know what I mean? What would be the perfect scenario for you if someone owed you money and says, fuck off, you're not getting it? What's the best way you think you could handle that? <laughs> Get a shit out of that. <laughs> That's the only thing. It's in that life. The only option is sometimes is violence. It's not as mm-hmm. if you're a straight pig and working and everything's through the books and deal with things legally yeah. it doesn't work that way no it literally don't work that way do the screws or anything sit that inside the, the coppers say about the fucking robbing and all the madness that you've oh done? yeah they, they love it they like they're like this is just wild like there's just all the govs that come to me and talk about it they're just like they're just fascinated they're like what the fuck man because they've known me from for years do you know what I mean from when I was just being in there as a little shit to now being older making loads of money do you know what I mean so people like, don't understand that oh, no, I had the mad. big man on yesterday um, he was one of the EDL founders uh, Gone Mate Singh he's like oh you're having Danny on he's like I can't believe the shit we're just brazen just online fuck this cunt fuck that cunt <laughs> and just no caring because what are they going to do at the end of the day like I always said in all the podcasts you sell by date you sell by date you can't change that do you know what I mean if someone's going to do it they're going to do it it is what it is I'll, I'll go out with a smile on my face do you know what I mean would you ever move away mm, move away to where like out of the country yeah Spain Tenerife uh, Spain is my getaway like my missus family they go to Spain every year and that's my getaway out there that's where I go to calm down chill out and when I know I'm like in October when I was losing the plot that's my getaway when I go to Spain obviously in October everything's shut so you can't really get away but I don't know, I do like going out there. We, we we go out there every year for three months of the year and it's beautiful. It's so chilled. I'm training every day. It's, but to live there, it's like... That's quite boring as well. And it's, yeah. I feel as if Spain, some bits in Europe are stuck in the 80s. Yeah, Nothing's bad. really went forward. Obviously, you look at places like Dubai and mm. it's more advanced. It just 100%. doesn't feel natural to me, Dubai. Yeah. I thought about fucking off to Dubai. I thought Portugal, Spain. <laughs> I thought about Dubai and then my mate said, Dan, you'll be in jail within a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, I was like, What do you mean? And he was like, Mate, you probably slap someone in the mall and then you'll be in jail, like, and you're getting like 10 years, so don't even bother. But Dubai could be a good place for you, a good shout actually, for just being chill. Nobody Mm. says anything, nobody's loud, there's no Mm. 
Madness there. And I got I'll end up fucking doing something dumb when I Do you ever go to the doctors and go through like a day of psychiatric reports? I've, I think I need to. <laughs> just to say, well, wait a minute, maybe you could diagnose with this and this. Mm. Just to, to give you an understanding mm. of the way you act, how you handle things. Do you know what I'm saying? It gives you yeah, that's what, I think once you understand it, you handle it better mm. because it makes sense and it makes sense for people around you to go, ah, he's okay, it's okay because he's this and this. Yes. Same as when Tommy was on a couple of months ago. It made sense to him because it was fucking, uh, do you know what I'm saying? Then once you tell him what it is, it comes down and it makes sense. And yeah, of course. It better. I've but you seem calm as fuck today. No, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm literally, I don't know how to describe how I feel. It's like, I was looking at that and now I'm here. Does that make sense? But like, I'm literally. still not over it. I still feel like I'm in a cell looking at 17 years. So I'm still not back. Do you know what I mean? Do you think you're maturing a bit? Yeah, 100%. Because the other day, I would have gone through that kid's door. Literally. Or the gym. I would have just gone straight in rago. Like, but then I sat there and thought, as I'm sitting there looking at his car, looking at the gym, I'm like, mate, he ain't actually done anything. You're now going to go and get 17 years. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. You, can, you can't sit here and say... Oh, nice. You want to be with the family and the kids and, but then and the give next them minute, time the and the next you're fucking doing oh, the madness. Nuts, isn't it? But that must be horrible to live in. Oh, Constant fucking battle. No, nah, because, do you know what? I, I I enjoy it. Does that make sense? It's weird. Like, if I'm just, like, for example, got out of jail, picking up my kids from school, dropping my kids off at school. That's all I've been doing. All of a sudden, this little beef happened. I'm like, whoa, lovely. Let's get in the motor. Let's get this. Let's go. Do you know what I mean? It's excitement for me. So it's like I have bare different personalities. I could be at home playing PlayStation. I could be taking the kids to school. Next thing, something happens, I'm in the motor, going to do what we've got to do. I class it as business, do you know what I mean? Do you think you're bipolar? 100 million trillion percent. <laughs> 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 That's not even a days of my bipolar. <laughs> but you definitely, right. to make change though, <clears throat> for me being honest as a friend, is to go and seek help. Yeah, 100 And find out the solutions. Mm -hmm. um, because you, it's trying to find that steadiness in your life where you don't need to overreact in chaos because you doing that then puts the pressure on the missus. Are you going to be okay? And then the missus puts the pressure on the kids because she's worrying about dad. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it always has that effect. You're not just harming yourself. That's self-harming in a way. Yeah, definitely. Anger, frustration, mm. get this, get that, and acting this fucking clown. Because it's not you mm. when you actually sit in your home, family, switched off, playing the computer, going on holidays. You can have a fucking great life, mm. but you choose to still be 18 sometimes. 18, and I've got a few more years low. <laughs> <laughs> And like I say, it's all right for us to laugh and joke because sometimes in life that's all we can fucking do. But hundred million. Bit. It's too. You got to laugh or you cry. Yeah, it's just to try and find the balance for yourself. And like I say, I'm always rooting for you to succeed and do well. Mm -hmm. And one day I think, fuck's sake, James, I'm retired somewhere. And I think, fucking good on you. I am. I am retired. But it's when someone pokes me with the stick, I'm not retired. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I'm retired. I will not go on that street and have a fight with Bill. I will not walk down the road and have a fight with Richard. But if I walk down the street and Richard calls me a cunt, Richard's getting his head punched in. If I go to the shop and Bill's there with these mates and thinking they're all traps, I'm going to stab one of them up. Like, that's how I am. If you just Richard says hi, I say hi. I walk down the road, Bill says hello. What's that to me? I go, what's that to me? Don't poke me with the stick and I'll, I'm retired. Why? Like, it's as simple as that. But that's insanity because people always push your buttons in life no matter what. You could walk down the road just now and people will walk in front of you, they could stand in your shoe, they could bump in you, people can look over. That's just, but I'm not but I'm not bothered about that. Someone you're just not looking my for that. Yeah, but I'm again, not. you say that. Mm. Mm. I'm, not, I'm literally, like, someone could shed on my shoe. I'm like, oh, watch out, mate. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an horrible person. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know that, though. It's if someone just crosses that that other line do you know what I mean but you're always going to get tested because there's always oh, somebody younger older who yeah, thinks they're one, bigger and better and stronger percent but do you know what that that rep that that street credit doesn't make a penny bro so Not I now. don't give a shit you, you want the rep you want you want the the the, the, the fame that that old bullshit I don't care crack on have it do you know what I mean like you want to be the gangster of the manor have it who cares it doesn't make you a penny and from the, when I've learnt that 
I haven't given a shit. Do you know what I mean? About the streets, the roads, the the gang banging shit. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I couldn't give a shit. But when they overstep the mark, like if I'm with my kid or something and then someone says something, then it's a whole nother level. Do you know what I mean? I'll always be the person that no matter what you do, I'll always do better. Like if you punch me in the face, I'm going to punch you in the face, your bird in the face. You punch, you kick me, I'm going to kick you, your missus or your dog. You, so you won't win unless you kill me. Who's willing to kill someone in this day and age? Let's be serious. It's a great life we live. Weather's lovely. You can go to great places like the buyer. Who's going to kill someone? Is your Robin days over? Yeah. I don't know. If <laughs> a nice one come up, I'll, I'll, I might give it a little go. What about the watch one you done? Was that two years ago? What was that watch? You were selling watches half price and people were buying into it. Oh yeah, that was madness, wasn't it? Why were they doing that? I don't know. Absolute nutters. That the worry, sometimes though with the robbing back in the day to then the retaliation possibly on your family? Um, no, nah, because the, if we're talking about back in the day, then people back in the day would have come in my ass and they would have put buns out. They would have stabbed me, shot me, done, they would have done something back in the day. This day and age we're living in, they come and smash my windows. Like, what the fuck? My mum has done more damage. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's girl behaviour, do you know what I mean? Like, you're cheating your bird, she smashes your car up. I've robbed these fuckers, underground that geezer, the other geezer that was with him, some idiot from the Isle of Dogs, some fat little div, seven and a half boxes of work. Like, you smashed the windows of my car. Make it make sense. <laughs> like, you're not making it make sense. I've robbed Jews for all of this and you've smashed the windows of my car and made me another 50 grand. Boring. Like, do it again. <laughs> it's mad though that people will still connect and invest or give you anything mm. that is mad to because you, you're blatantly out there listen i don't give a fuck so no, that still puzzles me that why they still want to get involved i don't i don't get but that. you know what it is i don't rob people until someone does the they do wrong like even back to my first robbery i was never gonna rob it rob that man i was never had intentions to rob him but he then started being dodgy by giving me scottish notes by coming 10 grand 20 grand short I don't have the intention of robbing people. I like to do business. If I could just make a drink by getting you to buy this off him and I'll just take a quick grand or whatever, I'll do them every day. Do you know what I mean? But it's when that person then starts being dodgy that then I end up then robbing them. Do you know what I mean? So I do do legit business. But as soon as they act dodgy, then the boogeyman comes up. My, think, my ADHD kicks in. <laughs> what do you think of the watches now? The market's oh, fairly its ass, isn't oh, it? No watch. I'm done with watches. No watches. Like, can't be arse watches. Fuck watches. Absolute fell out of the arse. And let's be serious. Do you really want to get stabbed up for a kettle? Just to, just to look good. But let's be serious. I've had 100 grand watches. I've had 200 grand watches. I've had 50 grand watches. I've never set the time on them. So what, what, what have you got it on your wrist for? It's just a status. Do you know what I mean? But this day and age we're living in now, do you want to go to the restaurant with your missus? Do you want to go to the restaurant with your mates? Walk out of Salt Bay or these restaurants sexy fishing at. I know people will walk out of these restaurants and have watches ripped off their wrist. What if they start fighting back? You're going to get stabbed. You're going to get killed for a watch. That video that I see when that woman was on the floor and she was getting beat up while that geezer's watch was getting took off his wrist in London. But from that day I watched that video, I said, I'm done. Not wearing watches. For what? And I've had it myself. I've drove through Peckham myself. I grew up in Peckham. I drove through Peckham, pulled up, didn't see no mopeds, no nothing around. Got out of the car. I had a skillet and AP on. My missus had her watch on. Got my little, as I'm opening the back door to get my little girl out of the car, I've turned it around. I've seen a moped pull up, two kids on a moped. And they went, you do nothing. And I went, what's that then? They went, it was going to be your time, but we know who you are. Have a good day. And drove off. I was like, fuck. And I was caught, James. There was on a moped there. I'm leaning the car to get my little girl out. Do you remember that? That's how my aunt's us. I was like, fuck. <laughs> Anyone's gettable. I had no weapons. I had nothing on me. I was going to my aunt's house. My aunt's got cancer. I'm going to see my aunt with my kids. You just don't think. It could happen at any split moment in time. No matter, you could be Mike Tyson. Your watch could get took off your wrist. 
as quick as you know it. I mean, I can get done. Is it, exactly that. He you know pulled a gun but out. then he's got a glass chin, he can't even yeah. do anything. He pulled a gun out to him, I think. <laughs> exactly that. It's not fit the one up. Anyone yeah. can, anyone. My mate's got done in our beef art. Literally in our beef art. Can all have a fight. Come walking out of um, Blue Merlin as they're walking in through the car park. Geezer jumped off the back of the moped, ripped the watch off. Before they knew it, start chasing him. Geezer on the moped driving off. 300 grand watch. Anyone can get it. It's, it's irrelevant how hard you... You can carry a gun. You can still get robbed. It's irrelevant of who you are. What do you think of the state of London's in the now? Oh, it's absolutely in tatters, isn't it? Absolutely. I actually can't stand it. Like, it's, it's, it's just so bad. Everyone's trying to have everyone. It's madness. You can't even do anything. Like, pff, yeah. Is it finished? Next 10 years, Danny boy, where do you see yourself, man? Tell me something fucking positive, bro. Um, 10 years, 10 years. I'd like to say pan for me wall, but that's gone way out the window 10 years ago. <laughs> um, 10 years time from that, my kids, man. Hopefully my kids are all growing up, smiling, happy. Hopefully my little girl's lost weight because she is massive. <laughs> um, so yeah, just a kid smiling, man, having a good life. Do you know what I mean? 10 years, my little boy will be 23. Hopefully he ain't have no kids. And yeah, just all my kids just living the best life. My little girl will be 15. Uh, is that what she so what about your youngest was she must be three what is your youngest she, so my youngest my little boy Denny he's two right and then above him is Delilah she's three she's she's a nutter like is that three years ago I met her yeah literally Fuck. I was actually going to bring her today just because you, you met her that yeah. many years ago she should have but we, she, we, she must have only been about we six would not been able old. to do this like no like she'd be at the windows putting curtains that she would be like every ten seconds daddy daddy like she's yeah. But she's that's unbelievable just, that's what it's about everything that I've learned from millions my 40 years on this planet is family mm. I'm, I just understand now I'm not happy all the time mm. and I've, I've learned to deal with that no matter what I do how successful I become it doesn't mean fuck all I don't feel nothing but seeing my daughter my mum my son seeing them happy I'm happy yeah, taking them it. in holidays yeah. getting them surprises that's it for me that's same. and that's and I don't even I'm still because I'm still fucking moan at them yeah. but I just um, a, a different sort of peace 100 friend seeing them happy one that is taking them on to Dubai and your business class and they're loving it and they're just eating shit and they're oh, loving life yeah, and it's just best. that makes me happy that's the same Take everything it, else I don't nothing makes me more happy though, than my kids smiling like it's I, it's it's a weird energy it gives you yeah do you know what I mean like if I go out like the other day when I went out and nearly done that madness went to the kids dad's house a lot when I got home my little girl cuddled my leg See, that means more than anything. So why can't you override the system then that you think of doing the madness when you've got that other lifestyle? Because I just can't take, I don't know what it is with me, I just can't take, if someone's calling it on, it's on. Does that make sense? I can't, I can't just go, do you know what, forget it. Do you know what I mean? But there comes a day you're going to because you're only going to get older as well. Yeah, one hundred percent. And that's the scary thing when somebody just fucking lays you out as well, and you the videos there, and then you become a laughing stock, and then people then and then the confidence goes. This is what you see with a lot of people. Yeah. You're still young, you're still fit, you still think that will never happen. But like oh, no, you say, any, any cunt can be got. Oh, one hundred percent. I walk down a road and Richard knocked me spot. Yeah, but it, it's, it's getting out and winning. Yeah. While you while you're still ahead. But, but it's, it's, it's it's that. Richard might knock me out there and then. Cool. But guess what? When Richard's laying in bed in his mum's ass tonight, who's the one going through his front door? So Richard won't win. And that's what I that's what I do. He might knock me out. He might do a video. Ah, oh, he knocked out. But guess what? I'm going to be the one laughing. Yes, but... When his mum's going to put them over. <laughs> the thing about it is nobody wins. 100%. So when you say you're winning... Because the mum's a straight girl and she's going to grasp yeah. straight up. So you, when you say you're winning, you're actually <laughs> losing... Because oh, one million you percent. lose all that just to get one up and fucking somebody who's just for a dig. But this is what I said. I'm not. I'm retired. Just don't poke me with a stick. Yeah, but like I say, it's just to try and hopefully you can go and speak to someone and it just totally puts the fire out within. And mm. You don't need to retaliate. Where I just don't. that ego and pride's not there where you feel as if they've got one up on you mm. because there's eight billion people on the planet. Oh, one million percent. And to fight somebody because you think of what they've said or what mm. they're going to do because 99% of the people who talk shit Never back it up anyway. Oh, one hundred. All this stuff is all oh, bollocks now, especially in the UK. There's no oh, many people got assholes that have got that back up what they're saying. They, they 
majority of the good ones don't even see it they just go and do it 100 percent. but in a society where yeah it's full of pricks. because every every person that i've had beef with was, when they were in front of my face then they're, they're not saying that they're doing the window up they're telling me their kids are there they're, they're not they're not trying to beef do you know what i mean but it's then when they get around their little group then they're gangsters do you know what, I mean? what advice would you give someone who was maybe wanting to get involved in a life of crime oh it's not worth it you earn so much more money legitimately like and that's just, and that's not even me just saying it. From the moment I started being legit, the amount of money I've made outweighs the amount of money I've made criminally, like literally. And you can put it in a bank. Yeah. <laughs> Which helps doing everything. Do you ever look at the people in prison and actually feel sorry for them? Oh, 100%. Like my think? mates that now that are in jail and that, like, they don't, then they don't deserve to be in jail. Do you know what I mean? Like they're good guys. Do you know what I mean? But this intro thing and it's like, oh mate, the birds they're gonna get and they ain't even done anything wrong. Yeah, it was something about I think was it France that were trying to throw them out, but there's too many people already in. There's no, people literally. doing twenties, twenty fives. And the rest. Yeah, but you should never trust a phone or technology, man. It's oh, gonna go somewhere. I I never touched it. Never gonna go somewhere. Literally. And, uh, I think people just like the fact of having a fifteen hundred pound phone. <laughs> That's what honest, I think they were. Because there was people Put it on the side in the car. Yeah, there was people not even doing that much and I think you don't need that. Mate, even people I know in jail, like one message, getting eight years, just having the phone, like just have a few messages. That's a geezer from my area. He's gonna get fifteen upwards, yeah, just from doing fake messages just to look good. He's gonna get that sentence. Like that was fake. Even the judge has said you've you've created messages to boost your your profile as a drug dealer. He's going to get sentenced on that, looking at like 15 years. Section at one, category eight. Like, he's trying to get it down to um, category B or C. Judge is like, no. Like, you're, you've created these messages to boost yourself so you look like Pablo Escobar. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's crazy. Like, you're going to get mess sentenced for messages. You ain't even done a crime. Like, in my eyes, you ain't, you ain't hurt anyone. You've just done a few messages. How are you feeling today? Yeah, I feel nice. It's always chilled, isn't it? Ah, was yeah. anyway, it's not a bullshit. Yeah. No, you're, yeah, you're, you're a G, man. <laughs> <laughs> if you could leave a message for anybody, a positive message about the life that you've led, the mistakes that you've done, the mistakes that you're trying to overcome, what message would you give people? Um, live the best life possible. That don't mean do it bad ways, but live the best life, but look outside the box. Don't be tunnel visioned. Crime don't pay for everything. Crime just puts you in a four by four cell. <laughs> Why the fuck do you never listen to your own advice? Oh, no, man. Because like you said, not all coppers are bad. And I always grew up to hate the coppers mm. because all my family were fucking drug dealers, shoplifters. So every time you've seen them, you hated them. You think, I hate they bastards. Mm. They're out to get you. But there's a majority of good people in the coppers who want to actually do good. And you, when you actually, because I've spoke to enough undercovers now on this podcast and the way they act and what they have to go through and seeing um, kids getting raped and murders and um, deaths on the road and car crashes mm -hmm. and what they actually see and nobody really understands. Like the, the stuff that they have to, it's a negative job. Everything they see is negative. And it's but they're not the coppers that we meet day in and day out. Yeah. Which they're not. We meet the dickheads that pull us over on the side of the road, that rip our kids out of the seat, want to search a baby seat. But again, from the, other side they've still got a reason because of the way your actions mm. everything you're doing mm. the photos the videos the fucking rob this guy and mm. spraying people with acid that ain't normal danny <laughs> that is fucking psychotic behavior <laughs> i swear <laughs> to god like trying to give because, section <laughs> because you've done it you're living it so mm. it doesn't mean fuck all you think nah just a scrap yeah, away in your car but look at them look at the time they come my ass and battered me do you know what i mean yeah they kick the shit out of me i went from my house to hospital for a brain scan like, that's not normal. Like them good coppers that we're talking about. That I bet they never done that. Just kicked someone's door off, gone in and battered them to the point they broke his arm. He had a black eye. Had to go to hospital for a brain scan. Knocked him unconscious two times. How can you knock someone unconscious two times? That's in handcuffs. He's in handcuffs. He's on the floor. <laughs> what? What? what where, where? Where is their their training to to cause that damage? No, no, no. You've gone in and kicked the shit out of him. Do you ever worry that people dress up as coppers? Oh, one million percent. To get you, is that a concern every time somebody tries to pull you over? 
of the uh, Unor. Yeah, you, you kind of know because their cars are so bait, but like like that video when I got nicked before, like running through a car park, it's an X5 that's pulled up, not marked up, wearing all black, loads of bodies jumped out of it. Now, I'm not to know if that's police or not police. So I've done the, I've run off, run around into a car park and there's loads of all these other people dressed normal. Started having a wrestle with them and then found out they was coppers, do you know what I mean? But the way they dress, the cars they drive, you, you're not always going to automatically know they're coppers, do you know what I mean? It could be someone out to get you. Look at Kenny Noy. He had two coppers in the bottom of his garden with barley's on. Do you know what I mean? Two barley's on, I think he killed one. That's where I live. Is it? <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, he'd fucking, I think he'd done one, didn't he? But then he always But that's so easy to happen. Yeah, but that's understandable. That's self-defence. If yeah. you see somebody with barley's on in your garden. But then again, why are you going out there? Should have the police. That's what they'd say. But that's what they would 100% say to me. Why are you going out there with that knife? You should have the police. Yeah, but you've got a big rucksack of fucking acid and grenades, mate. It's a different story. <laughs> and you could have left the scene. Mate, you're trying times. to get me raided. <laughs> but, uh, but listen, mate, you know I love you. Uh, I wish nothing but the best for you. I hope you really work on those fucking inner battles, man. Yeah, one hundred percent. And really kick on and be the best father you can be. Be the best partner you can be. Mm -hmm. Take the stress away from everybody. And uh, yeah, listen, would you like to finish up on anything else, bro? Uh, no, thanks to you and your family. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Always pleasure to meet you. Danny Boy. Love seeing you. Love you, brother. And, Love uh, you, bro. Good luck, mate. Thank you, brother.